Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. In this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're spending a bunch of videos learning how to use Transex, and I don't know how many it's going to be in total. But uh, Transex is, uh, you know, it's, it's a very capable MFD. If you want to go anywhere other than the ISS, or if you want to go anywhere other than the Moon, then you need to use some kind of uh, solar system navigation MFD. And one of the only two options that I know of is Transex, and then the other one is IMFD. And we'll do a whole separate section of the Absolute Beginner Guide on IMFD. But I think it's kind of important to learn Transex. Um, I think it's important to learn it first, because when you, when you learn IMFD, uh, it's, it's very different the way it behaves, the way it works. And it's, it's in some, in a lot of cases, it's easier to use. And I, my fear is that if you learn IMFD first, then you're never going to go back and learn Transex because Transex is a little bit more difficult. And if you never learn Transex, you are really selling yourself short with Orbiter 2010 because there are simply things that you cannot do, period. You can't do it unless you use Transex. So it's important to learn it. All right, let's go ahead and switch camera views here. In the last video, we, uh, I don't know exactly what we did, but I think we got up off the Earth and got into orbit and completed our, inje our ejection burn. I think that's everything that we did in that video. So now we're on our way to Mars. We have, uh, you know, done the burn. Let's go ahead and unpause here. And let's see how much fuel we have left. We have uh, most of our RCS, and we have a little bit of main... I don't know why it switched to surface when I switched views. And we have uh, quite a bit of main fuel. Now, we've got more than enough fuel to get to Mars because all, all we need for mid-course corrections is maybe 50 to 100 meters per second um, if you do it the way that I'm going to show you, which is the way that Dimitri taught me. And you notice this, every time I switch, every time I press F8, it's changing my HUD. I don't think I've noticed that before. Is that normal behavior or is that something that's some new problem? Anyway, now that we've completed the eject burn then we're gonna we're gonna fast forward time and we need to do a mid-course correction and something that you know I always wondered was you know when when do you do the mid-course correction or how do you even know when the right time is I started uh, when I was originally going to Mars from Earth I read in the deep space manual I think it's in the deep space manual it comes with transex and it actually says to do the mid-course the first mid-course correction once you're completely away from Earth's gravitational influence. So if you bring up Orbit MFD, you can see that the Earth's gravitational influence is currently 1.0. So according to that manual, we would do our first mid-course correction when the G reading here was basically 0.00. .00. However, Dimitri has proven to me empirically that that is absolutely wrong. That is just flat out not the right time to do the mid-course correction. If you do that, if you do what the Deep Space Manual says to do, you're going to burn way more. Your, your, your mid-course correction is going to cost you way more than it has to. So we're going to do it the right way. We're, I'm going to teach you the right way. Let's go to uh, rotation. rotation and let's kill rotate. Now let's warp time forward. And what I like to do is to warp time forward at 1,000 until I'm facing the retrograde of wherever I came from. In this case, I'm coming from Earth. So here we are, we're basically retrograde right here. Translation. Rotation. And let me just go ahead and get to the actual retrograde, not that it matters, but... Now I'll kill rotate, and now I can warp time forward at, uh, you know, 10 or 100,000. And we'll take a, we'll pause here when we get to the G of 0, 0.00. And I'll, and I'll show you why it's wrong to do the mid-course correction, or at least a... I'll try to. Of course, a lot of times when I try to do things, I'm in, when I state things, it ends up not being the case, but hopefully it will be. So we're just watching here. And you also, you'll see the plan, the Transex stage update. Actually, it already updated. So we're just waiting for that to drop to zero. There it is. Okay, so according to the Deep Space Manual, now is the time to do the first mid-course correction. All right, let's bring up uh, Transex on this side, and we're not going to do this, but I'm going to show you how we would do a mid-course correction if we were going to do it at this time. We simply turn Maneuver Mode on, and on this side we want to have the Encounter view. So Maneuver Mode on on this side, 
and switch variables over to uh, we, it, it, we don't know which one's going to be best so we're going to start with prograde and we're just going to watch what happens to our minimum altitude if for any reason you can't if for any reason you're so far off that the encounter view isn't showing you where you need to be then you can just watch the closest approach to begin with uh, with regards to knowing how well your uh, with regards to knowing how close you are to Mars. Like if your closest approach was off by uh, one G or something, then you're not going to have an encounter view. So just watch the closest approach there in that case. So we're going to start with a little bit of prograde and see what happens. And what we want to have happen, obviously, is we want to have a low closest approach. And I, I will show you the right way to set this maneuver up. Okay, now you can see that we're, you know, bottoming out. Watch the minimum altitude also. Okay, that's the low point right there at about 76. So we're, that would be negative 19.4 prograde. Let's, but that's not going to get us all the way there. So let's uh, check plane change. And we need to take out some plane change apparently. Now it's, yeah, you can see the minimum, alt minimum altitude coming down right about there. Let's go back and forth between prograde and plane change and see if we can get it all the way down back to the center of Mars. And we can. Okay, so that's 1.7. And back to plane change. And the center of Mars would be when the focus PED is like zero. This is good enough where it's at, but let's get it all the way Let's try to get it all the way to like zero or close to it. And again, anytime you cross the update, never hurts to do an update. Uh, then we want a little bit of plane change. That's good enough. We're not going to worry about it beyond that. Okay, so this maneuver would cost us 25 meters per second if we were to do that. So let's... Uh, I'm not going to write it down, but just make a mental note and, you know, 25.18, that's what it would cost us. That's not too bad, but we're not going to do it. Let's go ahead and turn maneuver mode off, and we don't have to worry about resetting the variables. As soon as we turn maneuver mode off, it'll, it resets everything. What we're going to do instead is we're going to warp time forward. Translation. Rotation. Let's kill rotate. We're going to warp time forward, and we're going to watch this closest approach right here. So go all the way to 100,000. And notice how it's coming down. Remember, we're going to get to Mars here, so we're going to have to do a mid-course correction at some point. But we want to do the mid-course correction when the closest approach is as low as it's going to get. You can see the minimum altitude down. So basically, you know, we're getting all this correction for free just by, just by going forward in time. So that's why it's not necessarily the best time to do the... Now, but again, we, we want to do it eventually, because if we get too close to Mars, then it'll end up costing us more. But notice the minimum altitude is just getting better and better. Now it looks like it's going to go down into the middle of Mars and kind of go out the other side. Focus PED. That's about as low as it's going to get, but uh, there's no need to do a correction right now, this very second. But we're not too far away from Mars at this point either, because we only had a 179-day flight. How far along are we? 71 days. Are we actually... Oh, we're not meeting Mars here. We're meeting Mars there. That's right. I was looking it over here, but it's this is, this is the point. All right, let's go forward a little bit more. Getting back out to 100,000. And we're going to watch that focus PED, and it'll probably, it'll, it might oscillate in and out a bit. Now it's climbing back out. Hopefully it'll come back down. If we get to, say, here, and it's still going up, then we're probably going to want to stop at that point and do some mid-course corrections. But it looks to me like it is kind of slowing down. So this is where we're at. That's where we're going to meet Mars. See how it's really kind of topping out, so to speak. Okay, we are, see how close we are, 118 days. And I'm going to say that it's probably not going to be the case that it's going to start 
coming back in the other direction. So let's go ahead and do a mid-course correction at this point. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to turn maneuver mode on, and we're going to go through the variables, and we're going to start with prograde. And what happens if we add in some prograde? That's making things worse. What if we take away prograde? It's bringing us all the way back in. And notice our delta V cost at this point is only, you know, that's two meters. Let's check plane change. That's taking us in. Now, we don't necessarily want to drive ourselves into the center of Mars at this point because now we're close enough that we want to start targeting the surface. But we do want to have a minimum altitude that's very, very close to the surface, if not even a little bit below. Okay, let's go down a little bit. Let's, let's put ourselves, you know, several hundred kilometers below the surface, like maybe like that. So if we did this burn, it's only going to cost us 2.2 meters per second instead of 25. There you go. Now, we can also, if we want, um, I kind of think it's a waste of time, but if we want to be really fanatical, we can say, well, what if pro prograde might not be the right choice? So let's reset prograde. And let's try outward instead of prograde. And it doesn't take long to do it, so that's why we will... And, you know, you can see there, we're, we're above the cost of what it was for prograde, and we're still not down. So as we continue to go, yeah, so prograde would cost us more than outward, so we're going to reset outward, and we're going to go back to prograde and use prograde. And again, update anytime you cross the update, but you'll notice when we're in between bodies like this, when you do an update, it has almost no change. that's the wrong way back here and again we'll put ourselves just a few hundred kilometers below the surface not too deep in because uh, something else we can take into account uh, while we're at this point since we're not too horribly far away from Mars is we can start watching our inclination and t uh, it doesn't matter too much but I tend to prefer to have a, a prograde inclination so Right now, this inclination is like 90 degrees. It means we're coming in over the uh, coming in over the poles. And now, with this inclination, this is more of a standard coming out of the west, heading toward the east inclination. It's a prograde inclination. That's kind of more along the lines of what we actually want. But again, the minimum altitude we're going to put it a little bit below the surface. But it's just good to know what our inclination is. The closer you get to the body the more it will cost you to change your inclination. On Mars, it doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot because uh, we're, we, it has an atmosphere that's sufficient for gliding, so you can get lined up with the base without worrying about your inclination. But when you're going to other bodies that have no, that have no atmosphere, like if you're going to Mercury, it's pretty important to pay attention to how your alignment's going to be with the, uh, with the planet when you get there. So let's just put in a little bit more just to put ourselves below the surface on that side by that much. And I, I, don't know, I don't know exactly what the right amount is, but we're just going to go with that. And uh, view back over to a couple things. Number one, do an update. And then number two, uh, we're going to do, we're going to reset the date so that the date is right now, this very second. And now we're going to do the burn. And notice the burn was three seconds ago, but that's fine. Translation. Uh, something we can do, um, we don't have to orient the vessel so that the plus sign is in the middle. It, it, since the plus sign, is, uh, the X is down here, it, it accomplishes the same thing if we burn, if we use translation thrusters and burn down, and it'll save us the trouble of orienting the vessel. So let me show how to do that. So the X is below us, so that means if I push 8 to push the vessel down, then notice the delta V is coming down. But as it slips over to the side, then that means I need to translate sideways. And now it's behind us, so we actually need to use 9 to do reverse translation.
Okay, now you can see the X is right there. So now we just need a little bit of up and over. Just, but at this point, you just want control thrust. So control two and control three. And now just a little bit of forward translation. That might actually be a little bit too advanced for the absolute beginner guide. Um, if, that, if that is confusing to you, then just orient the vessel so that the vessel is oriented where the X is at and then use forward translation. Okay, let's view over to maneuver and turn maneuver mode off and see how we did. So with that little bit of a translation, which was just you know two or three meters per second, we are now saying that we're on course to uh, slam into Mars, but as we go forward, this will kind of change a little bit more. So let's go forward by, uh, what we can do is we can bring up orbit MFD and we can reference Mars. And this will give us our time to the periapsis. It's four million seconds out. So let's start just kind of cutting that number in half. So instead of four million seconds, we're gonna warp time forward until it's two million seconds. We'll go forward on outside so we can pay attention to the view encounter. Okay, watching that. And notice this is kind of trending farther. Yeah, it's, it's okay. So warping time forward until the PET is two million, at least, and then we'll kind of check and see what things are, see how things are going. Come back out of time warp because we notice now that uh, we are above the surface, but everything is still looking okay except for the inclination. I'm not real happy about that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do a bit of a maneuver here. When you want to do things that just require almost no correction, there's really no point in setting up a maneuver. What we can do instead with translation thrusters, we can just tap two eight one three or nine six. To, to watch what happens. And all I want to do is I just want to bring that inclination down a little bit because this is almost a polar orbit. This means I'm coming in over the north pole of Mars and going around to the south pole. I don't want that. I want something more equatorial. So I want this to be closer to zero. I don't want it to be perfectly zero because I want some inclination, but I want it to be closer to a zero than this. So I'm going to start with just a two. That's not helping. Eight. And uh, now I'm actually, that's fine. So eight's bringing the inclination down. It's also bringing the focus PED down, not necessarily what I want. So let me press three, and that's bringing the focus PED out. So eight and three is basically what I want here. And this is like one meter per second. All right, we'll go with that for now. Now let's uh, go forward in time. Rotation. Kill rotate until PET is one million. Just so watching the inclination, still climbing. Focus PED is holding pretty steady now, so we don't want to go forward too far at this point. Okay, we're down to about a million seconds out. Now we want to get our focus PED set where we want it to be, or really close to it, because you can see how relatively stable it is at this point. Now, one thing that we can do, we did this when we went in the in the last video, where we went from the. Uh, moon to the earth, I showed how you can combine IMFD, one of IMFD's features with Transex. Now, this is purely optional at this point, but if you bring up IMFD and we go to the we go to menu and we go to map, because remember that map program is really much more accurate than Transex. If we reference Mars with, with, um, with interplanetary MFD's map program and change the projection to something that makes sense, so it doesn't much matter at this point. At this point, and we have that set for the PE of Mars, then this PE that we have here is very reliable, much more reliable than what we can have in Transex. So let's set our PEA for Mars. Let's for now. Let's get it to zero. Let's just get it to zero kilometers above the surface. Translation. And if we want, we can set up a Transex maneuver to do it. But again, when we're making such tiny you know, half meter per second adjustments, I just don't feel like that's even worth it. So just by tapping three, you can see that's bringing the PEA out. There's actually two things I want to look at here. Let me mod over to... 
I want to know the PEA and the EQI. Because I believe the EQI is this is the inclination that we'll actually have when we get there. So just by tapping, there we are. I actually overshot that a little bit. So I want to bring it the PEA just basically right there at the surface. So you can see according to interplanetary MFD, it says it's going to be two kilometers. And according to Transex, it's going to be three. So this is actually the discrepancy isn't as much as I thought it would be. But this is much more reliable. It's still not perfect because we're not quite close enough to Mars yet for this to be perfect. But let's bring up orbit MFD and now let's warp time forward until the gravitational influence of Mars is 0 0.01. And that'll happen when the altitude is about 1.8 G. So let's warp time forward. Things are going to happen quickly. We're really close to Mars now, so be careful with your time warp. Kind of watching the altitude here because I do again. I, Oxygen low. It always gives me a heart attack. System reset. And the only reason we got the oxygen low warning is because we're less than 10%. But again, we've got 21 days left. We gave ourselves plenty of oxygen, so no worries. But it, but when you hear that, it does definitely give you a bit of a startle. Again, warping time forward, and when the altitude's about 1.8, then we're going to have a gravitational influence of Mars of 0 0.01. Coming up to that number... And that usually, oh, there it is. I guess it's closer to 1.6. All right, now the reason we choose that number is because uh, it just makes for a good stopping point so that you can do your uh, do the next mid-course correction if necessary. Now we're going to copy that information to the HUD. We have Orbit Mars. We're going to put that on the HUD. Rotation. And we're going to just translate over to see where Mars is at. Uh, I have time warp on. Try that again without time warp. I mean, not pressing buttons while time warp is on. Okay, so now Mars is basically straight in front of us. If I turn off the HUD and press F9, you can see Mars, Deimos, Phobos. And if you look really closely, I don't know how well it shows up in the video playback, but you can see it if we uh, yeah, zoom in, change our field of view down to a really low number you can pretty well see it there okay so we're almost there let's get our field of view back to something I like so what final adjustments do we want to make at this point well if uh, w what we want to do now is we want to just get our we want to get our altitude at Mars set where we want it to be set and this is where interplanetary MFD's map program comes in really useful. Once you're this close to Mars, this number, this PEA value is very accurate. Uh, it's really, and I'm actually surprised that Transex is showing that it's that close because usually, you know, there's much more error in Transex than this. But we're going to rely on interplanetary MFD's map program according to what it says that the PEA is. Translation. And all we need to do here is we just need to translate laterally in or out, so one or three, just a little bit. In this case, it's going to be three to bring that PEA, and that's like one-tenth of a meter per second, and it put it at pretty much exactly where I want it to be. Uh, we want to keep it fairly low because we want to use the atmosphere of Mars as a break, uh, but, we, but we don't want it to be so low that we could potentially overheat um, that probably won't happen even in the XR2 because the uh, when you arrive at Mars, your velocity is just not going to be that high. In fact, we've got a uh, actually it's quite a bit higher than it usually is in this case, and that's just because we took the short we took a short trip out. But a lot of times you'll see that your PEV, this is your um, your periapsis velocity. This is how fast you're going to be do going when you reach periapsis, and usually this would be closer to like 6.5, I believe, if you had a normal Hamann transfer out to Mars. So that's really the only thing that I would say that you might want to use IMFD for, and you don't have to. You can see that you can still use a Transex for that purpose, but just the discrepancy between IMFD and Transex, you'll note always that tra uh, IMFD will be more accurate. So let's warp time forward. Let's get really close to Mars, and then we're going to end this part of the video. 
be very careful with your time warp. You got to remember you're only, you know, a couple hundred thousand seconds away from your from your target now. So if you go to a hundred thousand, you'll blow right past it. It's really easy to do. I've done it. In fact, I think I did it on video once. Notice how that PEA is holding perfectly steady. And see how Transex, again, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of dancing around. It's kind of doing its own thing. So this is much more reliable. And we'll get down to uh, 10,000, about right here. Yeah, this will be a good stopping point. Yeah, again, we, you know, I don't want to have, I don't want to start a new thing and then have to end the video two minutes later. So that's it for uh, this video. And if you just really wanted to know how to get to Mars, then that's it for the series. But in the next part, we'll do some atmospheric braking. It's really easy to do on Mars. And uh, then we'll, we'll, you know, address landing and all of that kind of thing. If you like this part of the video, like it. And if you didn't like it, thumbs down. Leave your comments, questions, all that stuff down below. And check for links. Uh, if I have any, I'll put them in the description in the description box below. Check my FAQ if you have questions. I have a lot of uh, people ask me the same stuff commonly, so I have a whole FAQ that I made there. I also have a Facebook fan page. Uh, check for that link. It's in the description. Uh, like my Facebook fan page, and you can see what I'm doing on there. I post not only my Orbiter videos, but other articles and cool stuff that I run into online, because uh, I can't post that kind of stuff on YouTube. So if you're if you like social media, then check that out. And if you hate social media, especially if you hate Facebook, no problem, I understand. Kind of hate it myself sometimes. Uh, that's it, and I will see you in the next part.